Oh, hey, welcome to this week's video, which will probably be first of many of me just kind of throwing shit out a wall and seeing what's gonna stick because hi, I am here to support the writers and actors strike, which does kind of affect my content. So in the meantime, if you can just kind of give me some grace, maybe hold my hand a little bit while we figure this out, that would be great. But I figured in the meantime, hey, Let's talk about some controversial, maybe some unpopular opinions my subscribers have about movies, TV shows, maybe even Hollywood itself. So I did ask you guys on Instagram to send over any of those opinions. I chose there, which is kind of funny because like, what is Instagram? I don't open that app, but I figured that would be the best way to kind of keep it anonymous and um, make people the most comfortable sharing some opinions. And you know what? That might've been a problem because some of the things that we are going to be talking about today their opinions. So without further ado, let's get started. I have quite a lot to share. So I think we're gonna start off kind of tame, something not really that wild. Let's go. Clueless was weird as f Falling in love with your stepbrother, bye. Iconic fashion though. Honestly, no notes. I completely agree. I remember watching it when I was younger and like not really thinking anything of it. But as I got older and realized, oh, that's her stepbrother. Granted, like they're not related anymore because the parents divorced. It's still weird. It's still a little too close for her comfort. It's given a little too like Alabama. It's giving cousin. It's giving someone needs to go to jail. Not big on the Breaking Bad franchise. I still need convincing to start it. I put this in here solely for the audience because I do feel like I have some dude bros here. So how do you feel hearing that? And how do you feel knowing that I have never seen Breaking Bad as well? I have learned, I I guess I'm not, the last person on earth to see this show because if you watched my Black Mirror episodes, Aaron Paul, which I've learned is his name, was in an episode and I was just raving about him. I was like, this guy's phenomenal. I don't know who this man is, but I want to know who this man is. And my ass got tore up in the comments being like, <laughs> is that something that we should explore? And is that something that we should explore on this channel? You know, when we go back to normal content, I will say, I already know I'm gonna do the new Spider-Verse movie. We have Heartstopper if you guys want it. I still wanna do like the Avatar series. Like I have a lot planned. I don't know if y'all heard that. That was a giant boom and I know it's my cat who is like three months old by the way. But this cat thinks it's John Cena and literally like Pause real quick because we have to thank the sponsor of this video, BetterHelp. I feel like more often than not, we talk about therapy on this channel in a very beneficial and good light, and that's because it really is. With everything that is going on in the world, with everything that's gone on in the past, personal struggles, it can be a very tough situation to navigate, and sometimes you just need someone to talk to. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because honestly, it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. But honestly, the best part of the situation is that you know, therapy is is like shoes. One size does not fit all. And if you are matched with someone that you just don't really vibe with or you just would feel comfortable changing, you are free to do that, no additional cost. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit BetterHelp, that's betterhelp.com slash your internet mom to get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. So thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. And without further ado, let's get back into it. The Elvis movie was incredibly overhyped and the Elton John biop was better than Queens. Now here's the thing, I did see Queens. She was a cute little moment. I did not see the Elton John one and that's on me, kind of. It's also on the studios because why would you release that so close to that movie? You know, the Elvis movie though, I will agree. I thought that shit was so overhyped. I sat down so ready to watch it. I was like, I'm gonna get what everyone is getting. Like there was people who don't go to the movie theaters who were going to see this movie multiple times. And I was like, damn, this really is movie of the year. I was so bored after like 45 minutes into the movie, which is like, is it, isn't it like three hours long? I also think it's really interesting to gloss over the history of stealing from black artists. They really presented it in a way of like being inspired which may have been true at one point or another. Not a fan, not a fan. They need to bring back the 22 episode seasons and do weekly episode drops again. I agree. I love binge watching a show because I'm impatient and I like, I wanna know what's happening. I wanna know what's next. But 
In a perfect world, okay? Listen to me. Studio executives, when you stop being assholes and pay people livable wages and get back to work, this is what you need to do. What we need to do is have like a 21, 22, maybe even 24 episode season if you wanna get crazy, right? What you do is you do the weekly drops, but you do like three episodes at a time. That way, you still have something to look forward to, but then your plot develops. And that even gives you room to do <gasps> filler episodes. But in my world, that is a perfect scenario because then it's like the best of both worlds. You know, you get to progress with the show, but it's not also over and done with in like eight hours. You know, like I should not be able to sit down and watch a whole show in a day. It just doesn't feel right. Wednesday should have been a limited series. I'm kind of down for that. I actually have never thought of Wednesday being a limited series. I'm just so like, maybe I'm just so used to the Netflix model of like, hi, we're gonna introduce this show and then like not make another season for three years, but then you're still gonna sit here and binge watch all of it in a day. But I do think it could have been cool as a limited series because where do we go from here? I guess we continue on with like the whole mystery and whatever that happened in the first season, but I just really don't wanna see it get drawn out. And that's the thing. These studios, they don't give us long seasons, but then at the same time, they give too many seasons or they give too little. Where does that make sense? It doesn't, like at all, but yet it somehow happens. I don't know, I don't know. I don't get the hype around Avatar. Now this better be about the damn blue people because I know you're not talking about Aang, Katara, Zuko, Sokka, May, Momo, Appa, the Earth King, the Cabbage Guy. <laughs> Oh my god, Toph. Not me almost forgetting Toph. My bad, queen. My bad. But if it's about the movie, I completely agree. I have seen, maybe I just need to rewatch it though. Cause I've seen like maybe 10, 15 minutes of the first movie. And I checked out. I just like, I just couldn't get into it. But also like sci-fi-y fantasy movies aren't necessarily my thing. So it could just be a me thing. I wish I could get into the hype. That's like a series I think that I wish I just got like the rest of you get. I just don't, I really don't. Toxicity ain't cute. You know, that he's different with me, he gets mad at me because he cares, he's jealous because he cares. I agree. I think that is my least favorite trope of all. I truly blame like Wattpad and like the whole fan fiction universe. Cause I remember even when I was reading stuff like that and like those were the popular books of like, ooh, you need to read this because it's so fun. And I would start reading it or looking at it and being like, this is abuse. Don't get me wrong. I, I love a good like, the bad boy falls for the good girl, but this bad boy doesn't need to be so incredibly toxic. You know, like if he steals from a drugstore, he's a bad boy. If he's pinning you up against a wall and leaving bruises on your body, babe, call 911 and get the hell out of there. Long movie does not equal good movie. Babe, I agree. What happened to these like cute little 90 minute movies? What happened to the movies that like, if it was an hour and 45, you're like, whoa, this is a long movie. Now it's like, that's a blessing. I wanna be in this world. I wanna be immersed. I wanna love the characters. I don't have all day though. Adam Sandler is not hot. <laughs> and stop getting hot ladies to be his love interest. Babe, what did Adam Sandler do to you? This sounds like a personal, are you okay? I mean, is Adam Sandler hot? I don't know. I can confidently say I don't think I've ever watched an Adam Sandler movie and was like, yeah, he's hot. Maybe you made several points. Across the Spider-Verse isn't that good. <laughs> now listen, I have not watched this movie because I was waiting for it to come on streaming so I could watch it with you guys. But even that, that hurt my heart because I loved the first one. And I know we just pissed off a lot of people with that even being on their screen. That's a strong stand. That's a strong opinion. I'm assuming this is Keanu, Keanu Reeves. I just said that wrong, it's fine. Amazing person, terrible actor. You know what? I think this is the first time I've ever seen anything mean about him said or typed. I really have not seen a lot of his work. The first one that I can think of is Speed, and that's old. <laughs> or wasn't he in like a rom-com? Or is that a different one? What was that movie where it's like they were writing by letters and they're in different times? Was that him? Was that also Sandra Bullock? Girl, 
we need to investigate that. I think we can all agree though that he's an amazing person. And you know what? Because we don't get very many nice guys, if he is a terrible actor, which I cannot say I agree or disagree with because I currently can't remember anything else he's been in, perhaps I'm gonna overlook it. And I know that's very controversial and brave to say, but let me celebrate my nice man. Just look away, just look away. I don't like the live action remakes of animated movies. New stuff is underappreciated. Here's my thing. I honestly cannot think of a single Disney live action remake that I thoroughly enjoy. I just don't get it like you guys get it. The only one I will say that is actually decent is The Last Little Mermaid uh, live adaptation. And even that is like, I don't know. I went on Letterboxd, which by the way, I'm on. So in this drought, you know, content, I am still gonna see movies and stuff because there is, you know, no like boycott on watching content. So I can give like reviews kind of a thing. So if you want to see my opinion on movies coming out, definitely go over there. I don't know if you could tell by my outfit. Let me show it to you real quick. There are other pieces of the outfit to be added later, but I can kind of guess that you can assume where I'm going. So if you want to see my review on that, go check out Letterboxd. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm not a fan of live action stuff. I just, I don't see the point. And nine out of 10 times, it just does not have the spark that the original content had. So it's like, we're just wasting money. Take that money and invest it in like these new writers, these new directors, because nine out of 10 times, they're gonna have a fresh idea and it's gonna be solid. It's gonna be good. There was enough room for Jack on the door. Okay, I might be the only person here who really does not give a damn about this debate. <laughs> I mean, I get it, but I feel like this debate just has blown into its own thing and it just didn't need to be. But I always think of that Kiki Palmer clip. I forgot where she went. It might've been Wendy, where she just went on this whole rampage about this situation and it makes me laugh every single time. Homeboy died holding on to it. She had to pull his hands off. It was so frozen. I'm like, girl, I, you ain't think to take turns. She let my brother free. <laughs> she had a freeze to death before her very eyes. She watched him. Did y'all ever get that part? That's the cold part about it. She watched my man. Turning red while really cute and fun and has a good message is kind of overrated. See, now as someone who recently went to Disneyland and bought everything Turning Red related, even a kid-sized shirt of the band Four Town, this is a personal attack. Let me have my Turning Red and I'll let y'all have your Encanto. I said it in the title of my video, Turning Red over Encanto and not to like compare the two really because they both talk about like generational trauma and like have a good message. I just, I, I need Lynn to put down the pen. That was my issue with Little Mermaid. That's my biggest issue with Encanto. Like I cannot get behind any of the music. Once they stopped singing, I could watch the movie. That was like three minutes of the goddamn movie. Scream movies technically invented plot twist. Y'all are gonna be so mad at me. Don't unsubscribe, okay? I have never seen a Scream movie. <laughs> I know, I know, that's like a crime against humanity and that was definitely something I wanted to do in October. Will we get to do that in October? I don't know, we will do it eventually. I definitely wanna do like a whole screen marathon because the sixth one I think just came out on streaming. Um, and I didn't realize that they not necessarily all flow together, but like there is a continuous storyline of some sort, which is really fun. I was like, ooh, I can get invested. Ha 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 ha. I can't say anything on that. But people who have seen it, how do you feel about that? Do you agree? No, maybe? I don't know. American Horror Story Murder House is overrated. Someone had to say it and I'm glad it wasn't me. <laughs> I'm the basic bitch that loves Coven personally, but the Murder House season, I I don't know. Maybe maybe that's something else that like I just need to rewatch to get. I don't know. I did not like Succession. I tried to make myself like it and watched till mid season three, but couldn't like it. Babe, you really held on. Season three? Oh my God, you are stronger than the military. That's also a show I have not watched. <laughs> what, what is it about? Every time I see like a photo from it, it's just people in suits. Babe, I live in America. Corporate greed is everywhere. I don't need to watch it in a show. 
No one talks about MTV enough anymore. It formed crucial aspects of my brain. Babe, same. You are speaking to my heart. <laughs> Like, what was the parental control, Pimp My Ride, Jersey Shore. There's so much of like that era of it. Girl Code. Y'all remember Girl Code and Guy Code? I was tuned into that shit all the time. All the time. Yeah, that era of like content from MTV, underrated for sure. For sure. My boomer moment, but watching a movie in a theater is way better than on Netflix slash Prime, etc. So here's my thing. I agree. No, I agree. I agree, because there's just something about like the com, ooh, that's a big word, com camaraderie. There we go. Of like watching something with other people who get it like you do. And the closest thing or like the most prevalent thing I can think of is when I went and saw Infinity War and Endgame in theaters. Like that was an experience like no other in a theater. And I wasn't even really into Marvel at that time. I was just going with my friends because they wanted to go see it and I didn't want to be left out. And like the ones that I had seen at that point I didn't like. So I was like, why not? It can be a good time, but it can also be a terrible time depending on the audience. So for the most part, I agree, I agree. A24 is the best production company because it chooses original and unique screenplays. I know this is a thing where it's like A24 is becoming like too big and it's becoming too popular. But did you ever think that it's becoming popular because they make good quality movies? I mean, besides Spring Breakers, we don't, we don't talk about that. Y'all know how I feel about that movie. <laughs> I'm trying to think, recent releases, I mean, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Beyond Amazing, um, After Sun. Oh my God, I cried like a little bitch for days. These are some of my other favorites personally from A24. I'm gonna put them on the screen real quick. Wait, real quick, not to be so far up their ass, but I'm gonna be up their ass because they are like the first company that I've seen that is actually respecting and abiding by what the actors and the writers are asking for. Therefore, they're like one of the only companies that can actually go back to work right now. So just saying like, you know, don't stand corporations, this, that, whatever, but perhaps we're moving a little. Perhaps there is still a little good left in the world. The Idol was kinda good. Definitely an opinion. The Devil Wears Prada is the best movie ever made, better than The Godfather, period. <laughs> so many dude bros. Are you okay? Are you still standing? Are you okay? It's, I really dislike Dylan O'Brien. Babe, why? What? Oh my God, whoever this is, DM me. We need to talk because I'm curious. You have to have a specific ass reason not to like that man. I should get a DM that's like, yeah, you know, we were neighbors before he came up and he set my dog on fire. He killed my sister. Like it was a whole thing. You, you know, like that's crazy. Dylan O'Brien? The last season of Game of Thrones was decent and not that bad as people portray it. Oh my God, ha <laughs> ha yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, and I say that as someone who had totally seen Game of Thrones. I have totally watched that show in its entirety. I was not confused every Sunday for years when the timeline was talking about this show because I watched it. I was there. Uh-huh. Why did Regal Theaters replace Coke with Pepsi? That destroyed cinema, actually. Whoa, babe. Babe. I'm sorry. Do I look like congressman? Why did you write a letter to your representatives? Do I represent you? Oh my god. Where's my 10%? That's a very, like, I don't even know what a Regal Theater is. Is that like a local thing? Sounds really serious. I'm praying for you. Lady Bird sucked. Okay, so you have a good relationship with your mom. Got it. Heartstopper is so bad. I'm not homophobic. I literally suck dick. <laughs> it's so ew. <laughs> now listen, as a ally. I'm an ally. I don't really feel like I'm the one to say whether it's a good representation, but I will say it is one of the most prominent examples of like wholesome gay love stories that has been around in a very long time. Cause usually you get these stories and it's like 
traumatic and it's people dying or like getting kicked out of their houses and like here it's just just a cute little thing i like i'm not mad at it but i love that you prefaced i literally suck dick that's hilarious I miss the old 2000s, 2010s comedy movies. Some comedy movies now feel boring. As someone who just recently watched She's the Man, I could not agree more. And it's so funny because after watching the movie, I sat there and I was like, if this movie was made today, would it be as loved as it is? But I do think because people try to be woke or go on social media and see like a joke presented, they try to make their movies in that kind of comedy style and nine out of 10 times, it doesn't work. Nine out of 10 times I watch it and I don't laugh. Or like they put the funny parts in the trailer and then the rest of it is just hot garbage. And it's so sad because it was such a flourishing and good genre and now it's just kind of lost its spark. I don't know who's gonna get us back on top, but someone needs to climb that mountain right now. Hating on the actor or actress based on the character they've played playing is not okay. Completely agree. I f***ing despise Nate Jacobs. F Nate Jacobs. Add it to the counter. But do you see me sending hate to Jacob? No, because I have class. I have morals and a brain. Most recent example I can think of, it's not a TV show or movie, but in the game, The Last of Us 2, if you're familiar, you're familiar. Whoever played Abby, which is a character in the game, I'm not gonna spoil it because the show's coming out and all that, got so much hate, like death threats kind of hate. And it's like, wow, I thought we were here to have a good time. Y'all have lost your marbles, especially because the majority of you are grown ass adults and you're out here sending death threats to someone who is just doing their job, who at this point we're learning probably can't even afford food and they have to deal with your ass DMing them. Oh my God, that's crazy. Now this one is really controversial, but Ezra Miller is great at acting, but he still is a very shit person. That is controversial. Controversial, but brave. Let me be real, I'm not very familiar with Ezra's work. I know they have been in other projects. The only one that I've really seen them in is The Perks of Being a Wallflower. And that's a scene stealer, baby. That character, oh my God. How do you watch that movie and not fall in love with that character? I, I can't really speak too much on it except like f all of their actions because big side eye. I support the writers, but if writing isn't steady and well paying, they need another job. Okay, so let's talk about this one, right? So I think a lot of misconception. I mean, I'm gonna really talk about this in next week's video because I don't have a sponsor. I don't wanna put a sponsor on that kind of a video where I'm talking more in depth of what's going on. The whole concept of like, you know, if you're in Hollywood, if you're working on a project, you are making multi-millions of dollars. It's just not true. I don't think a lot of people realized that until the strike was happening and people started talking about the money that they make. Now it's turned into a, well then, just get a different job. But you do realize if all these writers who the majority of them are not making enough to sustain their life. If they all got a different job, who's gonna make the content that we enjoy? AI? You want AI written scripts? Girl, no. Have you ever called customer su support and you get those AI messages or even like online? You want that in a movie? No, 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 no. But I do think that if you work a job, you should be able to afford to live. And I'm not even just talking about in Hollywood, I'm just talking about in general. You're telling me there's people out here working three jobs who still can barely make it? And I'm not saying like with the writers or actors in particular, they should be getting like multi-millions of dollars and they're not saying that either. They just want enough to get by. They want enough to show that they are appreciated because tell me why these actors are not making even $26,000 a year when the CEOs are making like 49 million a year, right? Like it's just not, the math is not mathing. It's not making sense. And it sucks because anyone who is in the creative industry or has a creative job knows that already it's not necessarily a stable thing. It's not like when you go to a office job and you can sit there for 50 years doing the same goddamn thing. I don't know. That's just like a thing with me personally. I just don't understand why it's like a competition or like a, well, if you're not making money or you're not this, that, whatever, just go do something else. Like, it's really not that simple. I think this is just a big example of what is going on in our country and our society. I mean, UPS, thankfully isn't gonna strike. So all of y'all who depend on it to get like your Amazon packages and this, that, whatever, you're safe because unions work and they were able to strike a deal that was safe and worked for the majority of the people. Like for example, did you know UPS drivers 
the majority of them don't have air conditioning in their car. To some of you, that might not be a big deal, but for someone here who lives in Arizona, where the high was like 124 the other day, that's unlivable. That's a big deal. All I ask is just have a little empathy, a little sympathy, support people in what they're trying to do. Because I promise you, it may seem like they're asking for a lot, they're really not. Don't kill me, Betty White. Never understand the hype. I honestly don't want to live on a planet where anyone has anything negative to say about Betty White. So with that, I'm deleting my channel. I'm deleting my existence. It's been nice knowing you. Goodbye. No, that actually does do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this format. If this is something that you wanna see again, I literally still have so many responses I didn't even get to that could fill up a whole other video. Um, let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you can think of any other video ideas or even um, content that is not struck with SAG and all that that we could cover, let me know something that I was kind of thinking of maybe doing is like UK Love Island. I mean, I think a lot of us here like reality TV. That could be fun because I don't think it would interfere with anything. I don't know. I'm still kind of looking into it. I'm still trying to figure it out, but let me know in the comments down below. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching, sticking it with me. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.